we've learned by gaining access to the, the hedge fund operations and the cash flows that these hedge funds booked income based on Madoff's false fictitious income claims and then paid out to their investors or rather took from their investors right. performance fees which were substantial in the tens of millions Absolutely. and in some cases in some cases into the hundreds of millions we still have Tom Gorman here Tom that doesn't make them liable for anything does it I mean they may have just been victims of this scam like everybody else out there well that's exactly right you really have to sort out who all the victims are clearly a lot of people lost a lot of money but at the same time uh, the suit that you were just talking about here which I think is going to be one of several of its kind uh, these hedge funds and other invest uh, investment vehicles put a lot of money in here with Madoff and they lost it they may have booked profits they may have booked returns that doesn't mean that they really exist well what we're learning is that these hedge funds operate so as to book the profits on an accrual basis but take their own their own slice in the form of performance fees in the current year so we're understanding that these hedge fund operators themselves have lined their pockets handsomely and while we're bringing the usual round of standard securities claims uh, breach of fiduciary duty claims reckless disregard claims and the like the most important claim that we're pressing here is a claim for a demand for a declaration from the courts that as a matter of fundamental public policy no one should be allowed to profit from a Ponzi scheme these hedge fund operators turned a blind eye to a lot of red flags they knew about the impossible Tom Berman, Tom Berman, before before we lose you here I just want to ask you what everybody needs to know about this Madoff scam obviously or this alleged Madoff scam obviously wealthy people are affected deeply by this does this affect the ordinary investor are the things the ordinary investor needs to cull and learn from this scandal this absolutely does affect the ordinary investor because it, at its core it really strikes at the confidence of all investors and what it's what it ought to say to the everyday investor and to the sophisticated investor is is two things one look carefully at what you're being promised if it really looks too good to be true it probably is all now, right go ahead sorry Tom uh, number number two look at how the investments are being done and again if you can't understand them and the reports that most of the investors here couldn't understand the trading mechanism then don't put your money in there such a good point thank you so much Tom do your diligence check those labels just like you would with regular food that you put in your mouth all right thanks Mark thanks Tom next up we